One lovely afternoon, Alice sat dreamily in a tree with her kitten, Dinah, listening to her sister read from a history book. Alice, you must learn your lessons, her sister scolded. Alice daydreamed aloud to Dinah about the magical world she often thought about. It was a world of her own, where anything was possible. Suddenly, Alice saw a white rabbit hurry by, looking at a large pocket watch. Oh dear, the rabbit said to himself. I'm late, I'm late. Alice thought this was very curious indeed. She followed the rabbit and watched as he popped into a hole beneath a big tree. Without thinking, Alice followed the white rabbit. Dinah watched as Alice disappeared into the rabbit hole. Suddenly, Alice was falling. Her dress puffed up like a parachute, and Alice floated down, down, down. After this, I shall think nothing of falling down the stairs, Alice thought. After a long fall, Alice reached the bottom. Alice could see the white rabbit running down a long tunnel ahead of her. Oh, Mr. Rabbit, wait, please, Alice called. When she turned the corner, Alice discovered a tiny door. Curiouser and curiouser, Alice said. When she tried to open the door, the doorknob spoke. You're much too big, the doorknob said. Try the bottle on the table. Alice drank carefully from a little bottle marked, Drink Me. Suddenly, Alice became so small that the bottle was huge. Then, Alice ate a cake marked, Eat Me, and she instantly grew to be a giant. Alice cried and cried. Soon, there was a large pool of tears at her feet. She drank what was left in the little bottle, hoping to return to normal size. She did shrink, but became so small that she fell inside the bottle. Floating on the ocean of her tears, she was swept through the keyhole. On the other side of the door, Alice saw a dodo bird who was heading for the shore. Ahoy! the dodo cried. Land ho! Mr. Dodo! Alice called. Please help me. The dodo led a silly race that was supposed to dry everyone off. But since everyone except the dodo was in the water, it didn't work well at all. Alice walked into a forest glade saying, I wonder where that white rabbit is. Suddenly, Two round, silly little men bounced toward the startled Alice. They looked exactly alike. We are Tweedledee and Tweedledum, they said. And there isn't any white rabbit here. Then Tweedledee and Tweedledum began reciting a very silly poem to Alice. The Walrus and the Carpenter. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd, because it was the middle of the night. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. Four young oysters followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more and more and more. 
all hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling to the shore. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, you've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten every one. As Tweedledee and Tweedledum fought about what poem to recite next, Alice slipped away. She soon saw a strange little house ahead. I wonder who lives here, she thought. Suddenly, the door flew open, and out raced the white rabbit. Instead of saying hello, he began scolding the puzzled girl. Marianne, what are you doing out there? The rabbit said. Run inside and fetch my gloves. Alice, having grown accustomed to the curious things that were happening all around her, followed his instructions. Alice looked through the chest of drawers, but she did not find any gloves. She did find a box full of delicious-looking cookies, and she couldn't resist tasting one. She had barely finished the cookie when she felt herself shoot up like a telescope. Alice had grown so big that she no longer fit inside the rabbit's house. Her arms stuck out the windows, and her feet stuck out the doors. She could hear the white rabbit shouting, A monster! Help! The rabbit called to the dodo, There's a monster in my house! Alice reached down to a small garden nearby and pulled a tiny carrot from the ground. As soon as Alice nibbled the carrot, she began to shrink. Now Alice was tiny again. She was now so small that the grass seemed like a gigantic forest. But Alice was glad to be on her way again. She soon came upon a beautiful glade where the flowers all spoke and sang to her. Then Alice saw delicate curls of smoke rising from a clearing. She peeked through the tall grass and saw a caterpillar sitting on top of a mushroom. He sat quietly with his arms folded, smoking a long water pipe, blowing smoke rings in the air. As she approached, the caterpillar slowly asked, Who are you? I've changed so many times today. Alice replied. I hardly know myself. I do know I should like to be a little larger. One side of this mushroom will make you grow taller, the caterpillar said. The other side will make you grow shorter. With that, he turned into a butterfly and fluttered away. Which side is which? Alice wondered, looking thoughtfully at two pieces from the mushroom. As she took a bite from one piece of mushroom, she suddenly soared upward, growing taller than the treetops. She startled a bird sitting on her eggs, who thought she was a serpent. Alice quickly nibbled a bit of the other piece of the mushroom and shrunk again to her normal size. She kept the pieces of the mushroom in case she might need them later. As she looked at the many paths through the woods, Alice wondered, which way shall I go? Although there was no one else in sight, Alice heard singing. Then she saw a grinning mouth. Then two bright eyes. And finally, the whole body of a cat. You're a cat, Alice exclaimed. A Cheshire cat, the cat replied. He had an odd way of disappearing and reappearing as he spoke. If you really want to know, the cat said. He went that way. 
Who? Alice was very puzzled. The White Rabbit. Go see the Mad Hatter and the March Hare, replied the cat as he disappeared again. Alice arrived at the house of the March Hare to find a very unusual tea party going on. I'm sorry to interrupt your birthday party, Alice said politely. This isn't a birthday party, said the Mad Hatter. It's an unbirthday party. Alice tried to enjoy the party, but although it was a tea party, she never got any tea. The Mad Hatter and the March Hare dashed around crazily, changing seats and talking in riddles. A sleepy dormouse recited a curious poem. The White Rabbit raced in, worried that he was late. The Mad Hatter and March Hare tried to fix the poor rabbit's watch, but wound up destroying it. This is the stupidest tea party I've ever been to. Alice sighed as she left. Alice tried to follow the rabbit, but on the path ahead, she saw a strange creature coming toward her. It looked like a dog, but its head and tail were made of brooms. It was sweeping up everything in front of her, including the path she was following. Once again, Alice didn't know which way to go. She was hopelessly lost. Sometimes it's a good idea to stay where you are until someone finds you, Alice told herself. Suddenly, the Cheshire Cat appeared again and revealed a secret door through a tree. In the distance, Alice saw a castle with beautiful gardens. As she entered, Alice saw three gardeners, shaped like playing cards, busily painting white roses red. Why are you painting the roses red? Alice asked timidly. The Queen likes only red roses, answered one of the gardeners. And we planted white ones by mistake. Just then, Alice heard the sound of trumpets, and the palace doors opened. A long line of playing card soldiers marched out. Alice stopped to watch the parade of soldiers and saw the White Rabbit. After the soldiers had passed, the Queen of Hearts approached. Everyone was afraid of the Queen, including the meek little king. The Queen stopped and stared at Alice. And who is this? The Queen bellowed. I'm Alice, and I'm trying to find my way home, Alice replied meekly. The Queen invited Alice to play a curious game of croquet with hedgehogs instead of balls and flamingos instead of mallets. Alice soon found that the Queen would do anything to win at croquet, even cheat. The Queen didn't see the Cheshire Cat appear behind her. The cat playfully tied the hem of the Queen's gown to her flamingo's beak. Just as the Queen was about to win the game, she raised her arms while the flamingo held the hem of her gown. The Queen toppled over, and all that could be seen of Her Majesty was her legs wiggling in the air. The sight was so silly, everyone laughed. When the Queen got back on her feet, she was furious and as red as a lobster. She blamed Alice for her fall, since the Cheshire Cat had, of course, disappeared. Off with her head, the queen bellowed at Alice. She must be tried first, the little king meekly reminded the angry queen. The guards marched Alice to the courtroom 
where she found the queen was the judge. <gasps> Off with her head! The queen once again bellowed. Alice reached into her apron pocket and found a piece of the mushroom that she had saved. Biting into it, Alice began to grow and grow and grow. Everyone in the courtroom panicked. <gasps> All persons over a mile high must leave the courtroom, the queen shouted. But as Alice scolded the queen for her bad manners, she began to grow smaller and smaller. Soon, she was back to her normal size. When Alice was no longer giant, the queen ordered her soldiers to capture the girl. The queen of hearts and a long, long line of her guards chased after Alice. Alice could hear the queen shouting, and she saw that the queen, her soldiers, the king, even the Mad Hatter and the March Hare were all shouting and chasing her. Their voices sounded faint and far away. They all seemed to be calling her name. Alice! 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 Alice's sister gently shook her awake. Oh, I've been having such a strange dream, Alice said sleepily. I followed a white rabbit who was wearing a waistcoat and carrying a watch. Oh, Alice, sighed her sister, smiling, as they walked back home for tea.